Okay. So yeah, I hopped off and took a break, and now I'm back. Today I want to do a mining trip. I want to go get some ores, and hopefully, I don't know, make a weapon, a pickaxe, maybe find some leather. I, I don't know what's going to happen. Can't really predict these things, okay? So let's go check it out. Okay, so, um, oops. One problem. We need food. We have nothing. So, you may need food as well. I'm gonna show you how to reliably get food. Okay, so I'm gonna show you an area of the game we haven't been yet. And it's gonna be kind of the forest area. There's a small little forest and then there's an open field area. And we're gonna go hit up those spots because they have some food and some loot that we may be able to grab. That's the map we went to earlier in the little shack. So we came up these stairs last time, and uh, we hit up the map over here. This is actually where the forest is. It's back in that direction. I know you can't see anything, but um, that's where I got my sticks last video. But we're going to go this direction. There's kind of a little path over here. And this is where we start to find some enemies. These guys are like, they're walking trees, and they're not very nice. They will plant down and start shooting little needles at you. It's kind of strange. Anyways, you don't have to fight them. Because we don't have a weapon right now, just avoid them. To get up to these spots, you need to teleport. So, you need to know your teleport button. There's no loot in this chest, so... Always check, because the loot can reset. And sometimes there's stuff in here, sometimes there's not. It doesn't matter that much. Once you uh, hit this area, just go around and explore because you can find all sorts of things. Like right here, I found a bandit camp, I believe these are called. So, if you walk in here, you can see a fire that has gone out, which you can relight if you want. And there's some chests. This one has some buckles in it, actually. This stuff can be used to make um, a backpack or anything else that requires a buckle you need to go through the recipe book and you'll start finding out what requires what you know actually might as well work our way towards a backpack so take these buckles if you find them all right my fire's going out so just relight it each little bandit camp has around like two to three chests i would say um you can go around to each of them open them up and if they have loot in them congratulations if they don't someone's already come by and taken it all so that sucks this is what the entrances of the camps look like nothing much you'll see these flags and um yeah fun stuff so yeah just keep wandering around and you'll eventually find stuff like this. Another map we can uncover. So as you can see, we're right here and we can clear that area out. Boop, there we go. And it'll tell us bandit camps over here. We've already explored that. There's something else up here that I'm interested in. Spoiler alert, it's another bandit camp. So. Pumpkins are actually the best one. If you chop them up and then cook them, they give you quite a lot of food. There we go. So now it explodes into these chunks, and we can collect these to cook later. The pumpkins are what I recommend most. If anything, go looking for pumpkins. Alright, so we found another pumpkin just chop at it until it does that you can chop these bigger chunks down into smaller pieces but we don't want to do that until we uh, actually cook them and there's an extremely efficient way of cooking food in this game <laughs> that uh, may get patched out I don't know but as of right now it still works so I'm gonna use it uh, anyways there's another pumpkin here's the other pumpkin 
Oops. There we go. One hit. Easy. If the server's lagging, it won't break. And it kind of gets annoying. Alright, so we have another bandit camp. These big ol' like vines can be chopped down with tools. It's pretty fun. Yeah, let's go explore this one. Ooh! That's a pickaxe head. Nice! Okay. So when I broke one of those crates, I got this. You may be asking what the crap is this thing. This is actually a gourd. It's used to hold anything from potions, stews, and all that sort of stuff. This is amazing. Normally, when you find something like this, it's gonna be a just basic glass flask. And you can carry a potion in that glass and you can use it once, right? You drink it and it's empty, it's useless. This, however, has two uses. You can uh, dip this in stew, and you can drink this twice. So this is actually a really good item to find early on. We've actually come across one of the locations we haven't, or I haven't shown you before. This is the blacksmith. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at what's going on inside there, just to give you a, an idea. Am I? Okay. Oh, you're about to use it on the phone. Oh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, it, either, it either is the longest or the, or the second longest on the heat out in the game. All right, so that's the blacksmith um, and all the tools there. The goal is now to cook our pumpkin. Let me show you a way of cooking called chest cooking. What you need for chest cooking is one dry grass and about two to three wood logs. Just three of these. And this building is where we're going to be um, cooking. This is actually the spot where you usually cook food the normal way, but we're going to do it the abnormal way. And I'll show you how real quick. Okay, so what you want to do is you just want to come into this building to where the stairway is. Go up these stairs, take a right, take another fat right, come into this room, and you'll see a chest. This is how you do it, right? You have dry grass. You place it next to the chest. It's like right there. Grab two logs, put them down, and... This is important. You do need to fill every slot except one with an item that isn't pumpkin. Okay? So, because here's, here's how this works. When you toss something in a chest, it automatically fills up a slot. But, if you have, you know, one uncooked pumpkin and you throw another one in, it stacks. We do not want this to happen. We want cooked pumpkin to stack in there. The reason why we want it to stack in the chest is because food can burn if you leave it next to the fire for too long, and we don't want that to happen. Basically how this is gonna work, we light the fire, right? Like that. Take one piece of pumpkin, toss it next to the fire. You'll see smoke starting to rise up off the pumpkin. This is a good thing. Now you wait a couple seconds, Okay, that took longer than I was expecting, but this is what it looks like when it's cooked. Now, the next thing you want to do is take this cooked piece, put it in the chest. Now all the slots are filled, and you can take your uncooked pumpkins, throw it in the chest, and it won't stack. It'll cook. Once it reaches a cooked state, it'll automatically stack into the chest. 
which is super convenient and nice. So just throw all of your chunks into the chest. They will all cook and automatically stack once they are in a cooked state. We can add more fuel to the fire because I actually have a lot more pumpkin than I thought. I'm just gonna cook through all of this. All 71 pieces. All right, so we have 80 chunks. Nice. Okay, so now we are set to go in the mines. Okay, so if you come up to the town hall, which is right there, mines are this direction. If we come over here, you'll see it to the mines down this way. Nice. If we keep going, there's a map station, and then there's the mine entrance. Um, it says we are right here. Boom. I've already uncovered this, I guess, the first time I played this way, way back. But anyways, for the caves, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep the camera perspective on first person. All right, so here is the entrance to the mines. Um, you might see that your tutorial thing. Mine says I need to collect six copper ores, which I'm planning on. Um, if we come in here, this is kind of the, just the beginning area. You can climb up here and there's a chest, usually with loot in it. Uh, it actually has another pickaxe head. Now, when we enter the big, the nitty gritty of the mines, which is literally coming up. This is a leather strap, by the way. I'm not gonna collect those yet. Here's the nitty gritty. It's gonna get pitch black. You won't be able to see 20 feet in front of you with a torch. Without a torch, you're not gonna be able to see one inch in front of you. So make sure you have a torch. So if you come down these stairs, the entrance to the mine is always the same, okay? It's always gonna look like this. The stairs coming down to this. Once we go down in here, this is where things get procedurally generated. Everything's random. Every two weeks, I believe, the mines change uh, layout-wise. You can wander around. I'm teleporting just because I feel more comfortable teleporting in the mines as I can't see that much. And what we're looking for is copper. Um, this right here is sandstone, I believe. We don't need that, so ignore that for the time being. You can look in these crates. This is where the majority of the loot is found, besides the ores. You always come over to these structures and you'll find some interesting stuff. And I'll just tell you right now, the early layers of the mines, like the one we're in right now, layer one, there's gonna be no ore just because everyone's going to be stripping these early layers of all the ore. You need to go down further. Uh, nothing says how far down you're gonna need to go, but from my experience, it's not too far. Look for holes in the ground. Once you find that hole in the ground, you can go to the deeper layers. Oh, here we go. Deeper layer. The deeper you go, the more dangerous it gets. As you can see, there's eyes in the dark right there. Enemies start to spawn. And it gets pretty bad, so just be careful. Um, these guys have a special name. I don't know what it is. I'm not even gonna try, okay? Um, I just call them golems. This is the smallest version of the golem. They're pretty easy to kill. Um, there's also worms that can spawn, and they can shoot stuff at you, and they're not very nice, so watch out for them. Your torch, over time, the radius at which it's, like, lighting up, it'll get smaller and smaller and smaller. If you pocket your torch, like right here, the light will go out, and you can reset the light radius by relighting it, now it's super bright again, so keep that in mind. So this stuff... A player came by and killed one of the monsters, or something, but it dropped its ore. This stuff is iron ore. So let's actually pick up the iron. This is a golem eye. You can use, you can throw these, and they explode and actually do a ton of damage. This is gold ore. I'm not gonna pick it up right now just because I'm not looking for it. This is mithril. This is actually the most valuable ore you can find. 
Um, you usually have to go super, super deep to find this stuff, but um, when killing the golems, they have a chance to drop. That scared the crap out of me. They have a chance to drop mithril, and this guy did, but it's kind of useless to me because you need three to make an ingot. Here's the golem eye in action. As you can see, threw it at him and he died. And he's still alive. Oh gosh. All right, let's pick up the rest of this. Oh wait, that's silver. More iron. This is silver, this is the other ore that you can find in the mines. It's pretty valuable. You have to go pretty deep to get this stuff. But of course the golem dropped it when I killed him, so very cool. I'm not gonna collect them just because you need a lot of them in order to make ingots and actually make them useful. There's a worm. These are like tier one enemies, by the way. That worm is weak compared to ones you'll find later on. That golem is pretty weak compared to ones you'll find later on, so. All right, so this, this layer is also stripped clean of actual ore, so. Now I'm just trying to find the exit. I don't wanna go too deep though, because I do not have a teleport potion. So I need to actually find my way back up. Oh, there's some copper. Boom. Once it pops, this is what copper looks like. Collect that crap. It should give you four ores. Yes, here we go. A lot of copper here. A lot of copper. A lot of copper. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so let me show you a tip. If you take a bag of your copper, so make sure you, oops, make sure you have a bag. If you look here, you can take the bag and actually scoop up each piece of ore. It makes it way faster for collecting ores. Now look at that, we have 23 ore, just like that. 24 ore, okay. These things are fire bugs, by the way. If you get lost in the mines, these will spawn next to you and give you a little bit of light. I believe if you kill them, they light a fire and you can use that to light up your torch and whatever. So actually kind of useful. Okay, we have 52 copper and 15 iron. I think we need to get out now. We are now out of the mines. Once you reach these stairs, you are out. Now you can head up these stairs and the light should return to your eyes. The sunlight, I mean. Ah, there we go. We've done it. We made it out of the caves alive and with some ore. Yes, dude.